Thanks for staying with us on the show today. I'm joined now by a legal practitioner and a human rights activist uh, joining us on the show today. Thank you very much, sir, for finding time to join us again. It's been a while. Good morning to you. Thank you. And thank you, my people out there. Good Let me morning. quickly take you up on the issues we were taking just before you came in. We had quite a lot of reactions on telephone talking about what transpired at the Senate yesterday. Would you say that the Senate president and the PDP senators uh, 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 broke any law as we got to that proceeding? Uh, well, to me, I just want to thank God for that opportunity. And I hope people will be listening to what I have to say. It's an opportunity for us to look at our laws, the laws of morals and that of law itself. Because you are a senator, does it mean that if you are caught in the act of robbery or in one malfeasance or the other, now you want to cross over to the national, to the executive, then you take a bow and go without anything? No doubt for Senate, like this man now, Senator Bukola Saraki, he has some issues with EFCC. But he had it, and in between, he now contested for an election. It's for the people to say, no, this man, you are corrupt, you are not voting you in. If he gets there, that's a different ball game from somebody who has a moral burden. There are allegations, not only one, not two, but three, on this man called Obanikoro. And all those things, because there is a rule in the Senate that once you are a senator, you are nominated to the executive, you take a bow and go. There is a moral burden there. There is a law, no doubt. They have gone with the law. No problem. But there is a moral burden. But this is the issue now that we must look at as Nigerians. And that's why I say it's a very good opportunity for us as Nigerians to look at it when we want to elect our next set of legislature. Because I talk to you now as a lawyer using the Nigerian law. What we do is that we are using dead laws in this country. And it has not taken us anywhere. And that's why our economy is this. That's why the nation is in this state. And that's why we are crawling. We need laws to move us to the next level. And these laws can only be made by good men. People who have moral conscience on them. It takes somebody who has moral conscience to know that me, as a senator, I'm earning 20 million naira. But there's somebody out there who is not earning up to 20,000 naira per month. It takes someone of a conscience. As I'm talking to you out there, there are many Nigerian young men, or even people who have brilliant ideas. They walk to the bank, the idea die with them because the banks do not help them in any way in terms of support, in terms of credit facility. And this is the type of a situation where there will be a law to promote craftsmanship, to promote intelligence, to promote hard work and all by our institutions to support them. Is it the bank? Is it government creating uh, grant, uh, uh, facilities to help people? But all these things are not done. All you see is that people who have moral background are the people thrown up. Yeah. And when they get to office, obviously they can't be new people. Yeah. It is what is their background that will determine what they do. And we're talking about executive office where you need people of sound mind and moral integrity to move this country. But Heading is it ministry. also a possibility, Barrister, that we've not been able to interpret the moral requirement uh, for leadership? That's what I'm you going. You know, are right. That's what I'm time. going. Anybody can just be a leader anyhow. No pedigree, no antecedent. What has been the measure? What has been the standard? Because, for instance, even the Nigerian people are divided over the personality of this particular politician. Why so some are saying that he hasn't done anything necessarily wrong, others see it differently. The more reason. There are some people that their names are, is he the only person amongst those who are nominated? So it puts the question on all this procedure. Mm. He's not the only person. So it put pay to our argument okay. that it's you don't right. just throw people mm. up. Yeah. Office, political office is an office that should be people by people of honor, integrity. Just a minute. Let's take this call. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. What's your name? Where are you calling from? This is John from Lagos. 
Yeah, please go ahead with your contribution, John. Uh, I want to comment concerning the nomination of uh, Mosu Abanikori yesterday. Okay. Let me expect from David Mark and uh, President Jonathan. President Jonathan has already shown to us that he is a corrupt leader that we have elected in 2011. All the promises that he has made to us, he has not even fulfilled anyone. He cannot deliver. He is pardon to corrupt people, especially like former boss. And now he is nominated, he is uh, appointed to make a uh, uh, Mr. Rudra, somebody that has been taking himself in Rudra, Mr. Rudra, he is appointing him to come and raise the people in level to get the population. So what do we expect from him? But this time we are there. We are waiting for him at the school. It's all right, John. Thank you very much for your contribution. You know, I, I was asking that how exactly do we define the moral standard that qualifies a leader? In Nigeria. For instance, um, the Senate representative also said that uh, many of the APC senators who d do not want Obanikuro also have cases in court, you know, with anti graft agencies, and yet they are allowed to go ahead with their legislative duties. There are three arms of government we have the executive, we have the legislative, and we have the judiciary, and each have different points of entry. Before you become a senator or a, a legislator, per se, you must be elected by the people. You present yourself mm. to the people. And if the people elect you, so be it. It shows those are the type of people they are. No problem. Mm. No law. Once you have elected them, sh no problem. We have the executive. We have one person who is given the mandate, either the governor or the president or the chairman of a local government in the executive line. And that person now has the responsibility of selecting his team. If he now encumber, if he now surround himself with people of questionable character, good luck to him. But there is a procedure. That's why those the drafters of the constitution created a room that yes, we can sieve or we can sanitize or we can control people who go into the executive because they play a greater role in the process of implementing government policy. So we need people of high integrity, sound mind, and of impeccable character that will occupy the office of the executive. And that's why the legislature will be the, the gate yeah. or the net through which they will sieve them. Hello, hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. Just a minute, Barrister. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Yeah, my name is Omar, calling from Canada. Omar from Kano. How's Kano this morning? Yeah, my name is Omar, calling from Kano. Please go ahead with your contribution, Omar. Yeah, Kano is fine. Kano is okay. I need you to turn down the volume of your TV set. Go ahead with the contribution, please. Yes, I want to say on uh, the issue of run now about the Senate of Vanikoro. You see, in Nigeria, our policies now is becoming a national stock in the whole international community. You see, uh, you can recall for some of us that have been uh, that have been traveling out, you will see that a single individual in the Senate in a developed country proposed a particular candidate. It is a question on its own. And you will find out that that's a single senator opposing a nominee. Uh, it's, it's enough for all uh, the senators to adhere to it and see why is it opposing. Why, why is it opposing? So I thought we should, we should, we should, we should, we should, we should grow up. Nigeria has come to the stage on the level that we we shouldn't be, be a laughing stock. Look at uh, Morocco. Just like what uh, one of uh, uh, the I mean uh, the Barista has said. Look at Morocco, for instance. Look at the way they, they are laughing at us. And so many other countries. Please let our senators grow up. Let our senators grow up so that we will claim our positions in in the world. It's all right. See, sometimes when we look at these things on the telly, we, we feel so sorry for Nigeria. You see, there are many good laws here. To be placed, there 
It's all right. Thank you very much for your contribution, uh, Umar from Kano. But, but do you also see a possibility of restructuring the National Assembly the way it is? Because um, uh, usually we've had them pass it in beers and then they say, if you're in favor, say hi, you hear hi. If you're not in favor, you say nay. You hear that the nay is higher, and then they tell you the high has it. In the age of technology, even INEC is using cardio dance. Can we do electronic voting for There's once? electronic voting in the chamber. The this man assembly. deliberately did not want to use it mm -hmm. because he knows. If it is there, it is installed there. And if it's not working, then you question who is the contractor that was given the contract. But that's not even where I'm going. I want to take it up or follow the line of my brother from Kano. You see, Nigeria, we have come. Let me just use this opportunity to tell anybody who cares to listen that Nigeria has come to stay, irrespective of what is happening. Because the truth is the truth. Truth is one common language that is universal. And it doesn't matter either I'm Ijo, or I'm Yoruba, or I'm Hausa. Once I'm saying the truth, it's going to come generally. It's just as laughter. There is no true way to laughter. If I'm laughing, it's laughing. If I'm crying, I'm crying. So. The truth must be told, and I thank God. That's why in my opening salvo I said that this is an opportunity for all Nigerian voters. Thank God I didn't just know how God just did it, that this shame that, is hap that happened in the National Assembly should not repeat itself again. It should be the last thing that should happen in this country. This, the Nigerian people have the power to choose who to go to that Senate again. Fortunately, in the next few weeks, there will be an election into the Senate. So they should look at those that they want to re-elect into the Senate, so that it will not, not be used as a laughing stock as a point that people will just be disparaging us. In fact, I'm ashamed to be a Nigerian what happened yesterday. The, look, I'm not looking at law now, I'm looking at moral. How can I tell my son Hello. that somebody who has done bad should be, should be given a pass mark? Hello. Which means that it will encourage evil people Hello. like uh, evil Hello. people. Hello. What's your name again, please? My name is Isiak from Oshobo. Isiak from Oshobo, please go ahead with your yeah. contribution. Uh, what's happening is that this Oh, I'm afraid we lost that ACAC. You have to call us back. When you talk about someone who... What, what, who, what, are, what are we mm. trying to give our generation on board mm -hmm. that evil, evil is good? The challenge here, Barrister, I believe is being able to prove that someone has done that. No, you see, the rule is there in the, in this, like, in the National Assembly that once there is a case against you, okay. it is against all principle that you are, you, are, you are innocent until proven guilty. Right. Here, there is a principle that once there is an issue against you, you stand suspended until that issue is declared. Super! And I'm happy that the Senate President yesterday said eh, he's not aware of the matter in court or he has not been served any court paper. Be that as it may, for him to even say that means he's in, because this thing is in the public domain. And that's why I talked about morale. Look, politics can be played, but do we do, uh, take a national interest above politics? That's the issue we should ask ourselves. It does it baffle you that nobody is even talking about the leaked um, audio tape from EGT? No, let, when we get to the bridge, we'll cross. The issue now is that. He, even the, the, the uh, Urbani Koro has not come to say, no, I was not involved in it. And all other dramatic person has been coming. You see, this is simple logic. If we are at a meeting together, all of you that have been mentioned and that you have been coming one by one to confirm that you are there, what were you discussing? To how to share girlfriends during an election? Or how to organize a party? Or how to topple the government? What is it that you are discussing there? Then what is a soldier man doing amongst you politicians? All these are issues, but let's leave that for, for legal scrutiny. I'm just throwing it out for hints for those who are watching to think. But let's even leave that. These are big issues. Because this same person was involved in, in, in the by-election in Nondo State. In Lagos here, he used illegal means of using the soldiers to, 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 to try to stall a project that was ongoing by the government. In Ekiti, he was involved. So. But again, the whole government is that these are big time allegations. But in the, legal, in the rules in the Senate, once there is such allegation before you, you are he stepped aside. The issue, you see, there are some breaches 
There are some uh, uh, breaches to the rule. There, there are some other side to the rule. In this type of, in the Senate, they have that rule there that once anybody has an allegation against, uh, and there is an allegation against anybody coming to the Senate for such thing, such, such thing should be suspended. Just and they followed it in the first instance, mm. but again, because of politics, they moved it. Good luck. Good morning. Welcome to Call Digest. Hello, good morning. You're welcome. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Yeah, my name is Adamo. I'm calling from Lagos. Adamo from Lagos. Go ahead with your contribution. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my name is Adamo. Morning, sir. Morning, sir. Yeah, uh, please. Uh, I don't know. I just want to highlight that uh, where are we going in this country now? Because I'm seriously confused. I mean, what is happening here in the Senate is the good way, is the way forward, or the country? Well, just, just simple answer. It is your vote that you use to put in good people. We know them now. We know good people well, in our before area. Before you get to the issue of voting, because uh -huh. I asked you about um, the AKT clip, and mm -hmm. you said we should leave that to legal scrutiny. Mm -hmm. What impact or implication does this have that we have such a very serious moral issue for crying out loud, we played the tape on this set. Mm -hmm. We had mm -hmm. the minister, in fact, as at that time we call it alleged tape, mm -hmm. but on, I particularly spoke with one of the essays of the Ekiti Senghoto who said that was not the voice of his principal. I was surprised when the Ekiti Senghoto came out to say that was his voice. Oh. So now the Ekiti Senghoto has confirmed that that it clip was, was yeah. true. How could we have had such a clip where the minister said it was sent by Mr. President? and that the minister was telling someone to pick up a member of the opposition, and then the society is not even troubled about it. Hey, you see, it's the system we have. That's what I'm saying. We can only change it through our vote. I can go on the street now and start fighting. Who? It is a legal issue. It is like a member of the House of uh, the Senate that will move a resolution that no, this agitigate is a big national embarrassment, it must be proved. And the direct, if the Inspector General of Police is not doing anything, the Inspector General of Police will be directed by that motion. But is it the Senate that we saw yesterday that will do that? The Nigerian police that was busy removing the speaker, the, the, the detail of the speaker, is it the one that will do that? Uh, do that? He's already compromised? Look, we have a failure of institutions in this country, and the only way is for us Nigerian people to use our vote to talk so that we put people who we know will make this country a better place. If we continue shouting till tomorrow, they are deaf. The only way we can move this, that's why I say thank God, you see, this God is a God that orders things. I will expect that they never did what they did yesterday in the Senate because of the uh, the, 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 proximity the proximity of, the the proximity mm. of the elections. But doing that displays the imperfect that the way they behave. And one will expect that the Nigerian people will take it for that. This is not propaganda. This is real things. Let me tell you, a country like South Korea, within two weeks, anything legal is finished. In Nigeria, I'm, I'm, me, personally, I'm having a matter that I'm handling for the past 10 years, that we are still in the preliminary stage, hoping that justice and those people are retired, and there are some 20, some 30 years matters in court. When will you get out of this? That's just the legal aspect. Is it in research? Nobody is encouraging research. And for you to confirm, if somebody can dance very well, they will give him 20 million. But if they are doing scholarship, no company gives them 5 million naira, maybe 500,000 naira. Nobody research all these blue chop companies. Nobody is supporting research in this country. And you expect us to move forward? Yeah. Things must be done the right way for us to get. The Yoruba will say Hello. you don't do it the right way and you are expecting the right answer. It Let's can't take be this done. Call. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. What's your name? Where are you calling from? My name is Shekum. I'm calling from Okota. Please go ahead with your contribution, Shekum. In the first place, uh, the barista talking to me. There are times we need to face the truth. I am not a supporter of any APC or PDC. What happened at the Senate was a, a clear sort of politicking. The senators, like you said, we should be a of all the senators, PDP or APC. The APC are glorified messengers. The important thing is to stop this of Alukuru. 
you know, especially the Rapeto Gallery, you know what has been going on, they teach our Balikuru, is the shift of mental, especially for them in Nikos. And on the top, they know we should stop it. What I'm saying is that even if we have to uh, do its job, it will be better. That's supposed to be that kind of tape, the answer is the that that tape is supposed to have been mentioned forwarded to the Senate and uh, the uh, uh, guy so that no way that can mark the nine knowing about it. Then the other allegations, they must have properly have this in a way that the best general president can no longer deny it. But the senators, the I'm afraid that uh, that line is breaking. You might have to call us back, Shego. Thank you very much for your contribution. Let's take a short break here, and we'll be back with Top Stories making headline on some of Nigerian newspapers. Stick around and don't go away. <laughs> <laughs> we must learn to live together as brothers or perish together as fools. Martin Luther King Jr. day on Core TV News. Welcome back. It's Core Digest Thursday. Let's um, check out some matters arising ahead of the rescheduled 2015 general elections. We'll start with the front page of the Punch newspaper. And of course, I stay at Barrister Wale Ogwade with me here in the studio. Morocco fires back. Nigeria lied. Our king didn't talk to Jonathan. North African country recalls ambassador. And that seems to be another new dimension to all of the <laughs> politicking. And it's now going beyond Nigeria across Africa. Contrary to the allegations made by Nigerian authorities to the ambassador uh, uh, of, of the king in Abuja and local media, the king of Morocco confirms in the clearest and strongest terms that there has never been a phone conversation between uh, King Mohammed VI and the president of this country. You see full statement of that on page three, if you care to check. So it's in between His Royal Majesty King Mohammed VI and of course King, good luck Jonathan, if I can call our president King as well. Five injured as fire guards find cold paints, that's on page six. School roof crashes on Ogun Pupils, kills one. You get details on pages four and five. APC senators walk out as Senate class of Anikoro. What do you make of this Nigeria Morocco row at this very critical time in our election era? Unfortunately, the government in power in Nigeria is just taking every foot wrongly. And I pity them. I don't know. I hope they will sit down and rejig their think tank. I mean, there's no need. You see, it's a global village now. Anything that you do, if you want to put a lie outside, it will bounce back at you. What's the big deal about trying to uh, say you're getting involved with the Moroccan king? Because I heard it, I guess it was two of, I can't remember, maybe on Monday or so, that I, the, 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 the Moroccan, the, 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 there was a newspaper that said, 
uh, King Morocco snubs, uh, the Moroccan king snubbed Jonathan. I swear, I smelled something. So when the foreign ministry was reacting yes, two days ago or so, I said, mm -hmm. and I'm not surprised at what happened today. But mine is that there is no need. Let us settle our situation at home first. Like what happened yesterday. Like they continuing their campaign on issues. You see, I'm a football fan, and many people are, will like football. Injury time is time for you to quickly put your house in order mm -hmm. to ensure how you score goals. And not to start doing back tack, uh, rough, tack, rough tackle. Mm -hmm. Rough tackle will earn you a penalty, <laughs> and the penalty will bring a cheap goal. Mm -hmm. That's what the PDP is doing. Mm -hmm. I will expect them to see how they can overcome APC with good issue based. They are in government. They can do, I mean, present facts and figures, not go with the way, I, I, with the way uh, peace, uh, Jonathan uh, Patience is going, that anybody who is shouting about change should be stoned. No! Sit down and rejig your system and ensure that you win. Mm -hmm. Clean and square. Not Let's coming out and uh, pulling morning. things up on the, uh, 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 on the policy and overheating the system. Hello, good morning. Welcome to Call Digest. Hello, good morning. My name is Nathaniel. In fine, from where? My name is Nathaniel from Osho State. Oh, I didn't get your name. My name is Fisayo. 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 Okay, Fisayo from... Please go ahead with your... With the daddy that will go to the... As in your girl. Mm. And I know that God will increase our knowledge. Hello, hello. My name is Fisayo, so I'm very happy with this daddy that will go to the... As a girl. Okay. He's a man of God. And I know that God will increase our knowledge. Amen. When did you become a religious so, representative? So that you know the feeling of radicalism. And I know God will grant him knowledge and happy life. Amen. Thank you. Wow. Amen. Thank you very much for your contribution. Thank you, sir. I received that blessing. Maybe next time you come here, I'll add pastor to your name. <laughs> that must have been an oversight. <laughs> Let's check out the front page of the Vanguard newspaper for some top stories. Attacks on Buhari. You're desperate. APC fires back at PDP governor. Says PDP has already accepted defeat. Now, the front page picture, quite interesting. You see the breakfast meeting. It's President Goodluck Jonathan and Chairman T.Y. Danjima Foundation, Lieutenant General. Theophilus Danjima after a breakfast meeting at the president's residence in Abuja. Morocco recalls ambassador from Nigeria. Check out details on page four. Nigeria economy in clear and present danger. Uh, that's on page four as well. And you have tension as NLC's election holds today. Page 16 of the Vanguard. Let me quickly rush through before I get back to the barrister on the front page of the nation. Jonathan okays all jobs for Tumpulu, Fashil, others. Multi-billion pipelines contracts begin Monday. NNPPC says it's in an order. Anxiety in PDP over Moazu, pressure on chairman not to resign, and IBB disowns interim government plot, praises Fujaga card reader. Buhari, I won't probe past governments. APC reopens campaign. You get details of that on page four. A final point of call is the Guardian newspaper. No ISIS presence in Nigeria, says the government. Islamic groups alleged link deepened uh, security concerns. Islamic groups alleged link deepened security concerns. Details on the front page. It continues on page two of the Guardian. Why PDP shifts focus to southwest? You want to find out details of that? It's on the front page of the Guardian. It also continues on page two. Senate reps agree on 53 uh, dollar benchmark for 2015 budget. That's on page three. And anxiety intrigues as NLC's rescheduled election holds today. Page 21 of the Guardian. Hello. Hello, good morning. What's your name? Hello. Where are you calling my from? Name is, my name is Isaac Jafaria from Mushobo. All right, go ahead with your contribution, please. Uh, thank you, Nifemi. And I agree the great you brought, you brought this morning. We really enjoy his input. But this government of Jonathan is encouraging impunity in this country. That is why we are sliding backward. It is only those who know how to, how to break our law that are being rewarded. It all points to one direction. All what these people are doing has the backing of the presidency. That is why they are being rewarded. Imagine the, the like of Tompolo, Ghani Adams, and Asari Dokubo, who are some supporters of Jonathan, being given a contract 
They run into billions of naira to safeguard our pipeline. What have they been doing all this year? This Sampolo has been giving several billions of naira. They did nothing. They are just stealing our 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 oil in the in the in the big light. Then they are being given another contract for what? That points to you that all what these people are doing supporting uh, the, the present government, the, the present government is sponsoring them. That is why they have they are just paid back. We Nigerians should wake up for our slumber. We should take out this 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 rule of our uh, uh, government. It's Thank all right. you very much. Thank you very much for your contribution. Lots of allegations and controversies. Uh, let's quickly turn our attention to MCR to what we call PVC versus card readers, the issues and controversies. Yesterday we spoke with Kayo Deido, the Chief Press Secretary to IDEC, and he confirmed that um, the Saturday exercise, what they call the mock accreditation, that there were about four objectives for INEC. The first is to ensure that the cards, the PVC cards, are the one produced by INEC, and that exercise um, achieved 100%. Now, the second one would be to biometrically confirm, you know, via fingerprints, that the holder of the card is the true owner of that card. Unfortunately, that recorded some 59%. And my guests on the show yesterday were of the opinion that if they got 59% in 12 states, that's for them, that's a failure because um, that's just a representative of some parts of the country. Why not use the card, the card reader, to confirm that the PVC is genuine and forget about the biometric authentication? What are your thoughts on that? <laughs> for starters, I really want to thank God again for using Jega to take us to this point. I guess around eight years ago when I started officially my, my group called Voters Awareness Initiative when I founded it, it's one of our mandate that indeed we want to add value, we want this democratic system to be strengthened and co and co. It's part of what we set out to achieve. And no doubt we have during the 2011 general elections, we are part of those our group that we brought ideas that look, we can have an election and paste it the result be pasted at the point so that it will remove hiccups, stop the use of uh, the allowing military uh, so governors then to be running around on election day and so on. It was our own idea and we thank God it has worked. Then this uh, cadre that thing is the finisher. And it is only a fraudulent person, and I repeat with all sense of authority, no apology, it is only somebody who is fraudulent that will say we should not use card reader. Because this would eliminate all elements of election rigging and malfeasance to a bare minimum. If you don't, in the other time, if you don't even have a card, they just bring one document, they say he's in. People, all those who are there around, because I'm an uh, election observer, they will say ah, he's the one, the, uh, the uh, INEC officer who comes does not know anybody. So when those who are around say he's the one, they will allow him to go and vote. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, he has voted somewhere. But now the card reader is one. Once you use that, your, your PVC comes, if you like, have 20 PVCs. If you just get into the system through your thumbprint once, it is known. Because you can't use your thumbprint the in another The challenge now is what happens when that fails. Because no, obviously it failed last time. No, it's a simple thing. Mm. If it fails, there is a paper. They call it the content uh, incident form. Incident you, form. You, you, you fill the incident form and you are given the voter's card to vote. But of course before then it is when your thumbprint fails. That's why you'll be given the incident form. But if your card reader, if your card reader sees your biometrics, of card reader. There, it is your picture and all your names and your other details match what is in the card in the PVC, you are home and dry. If it's only when you are not able to thumbprint. And there's no big deal about that. But when you talk about incident form, is that not taking it back to the normal TVC? Because at this time, there is no biometric authentication going on. It's about, we're not going back to no, the, the physical TVC, judgment. the TVC is out of it. The, mm. It is when you are unable to thumbprint, just okay. as the man is doing there now. Mm. If he's not able to bring out your, your, your biometrics, then you will be given an incident form. But before then, it has been able to capture your bio data. It will bring out that, yes, it is your name and co and co. It is bring out your picture that you see. Then the man will know, okay, she is the thumb thing. They will give you a piece of paper you will fill. Right. That's all. But any other thing apart from that, and anybody who is promoting that we shouldn't use it, Please, such person is fraudulent, and I repeat, it's fraudulent. Why? Because this is one system, this is one idea that will move us forward in terms of, there won't be anything hanky-panky. 
It's just like you use your GSM phone. As soon as you finish your call, it will, rec it will tell you 20 naira, 20 seconds. Uh, 20 naira, 20 kobo for using maybe one second, uh, one minute, 20 seconds. Simple, no cheating. We know the number of people who have voted as against the number of people who have not voted. Not that there will be manipulation. I'm involved in this thing. You see where 200 becomes 2,000. That will be eliminated here. And some people are shouting they don't want it. In a short while, we're going to find out the position of the PDP uh, because the PDP Governors Forum were in Lagos, I believe, a day before yesterday. And we we'll also uh, heard from them what their position is as regards to the use of the card readers. I'm sorry, I'll just check out for further video yesterday and you get details of but, that. But please, before we go there, if I can quickly talk about the economy mm. because I know there is hardly any Nigerian person that is not suffering. Despite the fact that our economy is the best in Africa, okay. people are suffering. There is no indices to show. As I'm talking to you now, some state government have not paid their salaries because we all depend on the revenue from the federal government, which has fallen down because of falling fuel and in, in, in the price of crude oil. As I'm talking to you now, many people are unemployed. Some people have been retrenched this new year because their companies cannot pay, because they are burdened by, by, the, by the bill of generator to generate their company. I don't know. I'm sure you two you are on generator here. So many. That is the economy. Then, of course, the job for the boys. I may give it to Asari Dokubo, that he has gone for military training. I may give it to Tompolo, maybe. But I know Fashion did not go for any military training. And I don't think, even if they are big-time military experts, the job of national security is not contracted out to individual companies. It is a national project that is given to national institutions. And I don't know where this idea came from and that it's been promoted. It's all right. Let's take this call. Hello, good morning. Welcome to Call Digest. I called because of Wale. God bless you. Amen, sir. Hello, are you with me? And we, we are with you, sir. Well, with you, yeah, go ahead. God, God will bless Dr. Wally. I called purposely because Dr. Wally. He had just said it all. God will bless him. And he said, people like this, they are rare. You hardly find 5% of them in the whole country. And the truth, sir, so continue. Your, continue the way that in God's name, continue your face of the pressure. I know many people will be giving you pressure to, to say the other way. You are picking for the Nigerian people. You see, this issue of Katrina is so appalling. I'm surprised. That PDP suddenly become the opposition. Why would they be afraid of PDC? The, the, the issue is this. You the job that you have your ATM without your PIN number. This the country that you should definitely you have some people that have their thumb pain, their thumb might not be in order. Definitely it's normal. But you have this one. That's the that you should in the country that this can with the Nigerian taxpayers money. So why do you keep them? That they really even know they cannot get the same amount of votes in constitutional level. That's just why they are against it. It's as simple. If you are giving a PC of donning cards with a PVC card, why do you allow even the animal that is supposed to be happy that any want to use cards? So that if a truly PC has grown any cards, they will detect it. Please, let us stand here. I want the government to put them on the street with your bandos. They should make sure they use cards with that. Thank you. Thank you very much for your contribution. Let's um, hear the PDP governors out uh, and find out what exactly uh, they have in mind. The forum, which was tagged sustenance of democratic values and national development, began with observing a minute silence for heroes who fought for emergence of democracy in Nigeria. The chairman of the forum, governor of Akwa Ibom State, Gotswila Kwabio, in his speech, urged Nigerians not to allow the opposition drive them back from the obvious and ongoing transformation in the country. It is the only party which is not owned by any individual or by anybody. It is the only party that is not built around a cold personality. The continued quest of the PDP-led federal government for free, fair, and credible elections has not been in doubt as we net in its robust support through adequate and sustained funding and indeed the free hand given to INEC to operate. But surprisingly, in our opinion, INEC appears ill-prepared for the 2015 election. For example, at the time the polls were shifted due to security concerns, over 23 million registered voters were yet to collect their PVCs. 
And if you know there are countries with just 3 million population, 23 million will, will, will amount to disenfranchising more than five West African countries in their own election. It will be recalled also that even the INEC chairman himself admitted on the floor of the Senate that over one million permanent voters cards are yet to be printed in faraway China. According to the INEC chairman, the postponement was a blessing in these guys. Or PVC, even when the person has a TVC. Owing to no personal fault, either the, the card had not been printed or that the card reader did not recognize the, 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 the thumbprint, or because the card reader is faulty, or that the battery has died, and they don't have electricity in that area to charge the card reader. We don't want any Nigerian to be disenfranchised. And we are pleading also that the election should not be shifted again. The PDP governors are saying we should not shift the election again. Because the impression was being created as if we were not ready for election, even when we know that any time the elections are held, we'll sweep the polls because this is the only truly national party that does not belong to any Nigerian. It's the truth. We won election on 28th of March, but we don't want any Nigerian to be disenfranchised. Governor of Akwaibon State got to La Pabio uh, sharing some thoughts as regards um, the rescheduled election. And of course, um, uh, we're going to get the other part where they actually came out to talk about um, their opposition as regards the use of the card readers. But would, you would agree with him that it appears INEC wasn't as ready as it claimed it was for the February 14 election. I'm one of those who have always been, anybody who knows me, knows that I was on, I was on Jega's neck that they were not serious, and I started this campaign maybe uh, June last year. Because I interact with them, I didn't see any sign of seriousness. Because uh, as somebody who is involved with me by then, I would have seen that, yes, the continuous voter register is on. People are, they come out, roll out the drones, that people should come and register, that then they, they set up their tables that, okay, oh, come, oh, if you have issues, oh, come, because several people have issues with their PVCs. Some lost some damage, some uh, maybe they have moved from uh, one location or the other. All sorts of preparations that should have been done from the month of June 2014, which were not on ground. And I know I've come to this platform once in June or July to come and say, INEC is not ready, is not prepared. But just as one of the callers said, some people called me names, some people called me from head INEC headquarters that what am I saying? I said, I'm saying the truth. And we have been proved right. But now, thank God for the injury time, and to God be the glory, I want to believe they are putting their heart acts in order. We have 16 days to go. Yes, it may not be yet Uhuru with the card reader, but they can still do it. You see, to me, nobody should play the ostrich here, and nobody should know it all. And I thank God I'm on national television, and I know that they are listening to me in their NIC totals. Let them call the computer gurus, and all those who know about logistics, because they may have logistic problem in terms of moving non-sensitive materials. And I hope that they have started moving the non-sensitive materials now. The, in fact, if they have not started, they should start today to begin to move the tables, the, their, their, their bullet boxes, mm. and all those things that they will need, apart from the ink pad and so on. Let them do the sorting. The other day we were in Anambra during the elections. And they said that the, I guess it's Oshimili, I can't remember the local government, that they mixed it up with somebody, with another local government. So they had to carry, uh, where is this, Obusi, I guess it's Obusi town. Mm -hmm. they, had to, they had to shift the election till another day. They should sort themselves out 10 days before. In fact, like I do my things, three days before anything, I'm already home and dry. Like just wait, they will say, I know you won't do something. I say, I'm waiting, they, I've finished all my assignments. Mm -hmm. If I'm going to court, I've already done my work. I go to court smoking. And my colleagues will what, say, what do you smoke? I say Indian hemp, <laughs> right? Because I'm ready for my case. But then, you know what I'm trying to say is that the, the position of the PDP seemed to be the genuine interest of not disenfranchising any Nigeria. <laughs> because the truth is, whether it doesn't matter what party Let you're voting for. Sure. They want to cry more mm. than the bereaves. We all know 
that a whole lot of activities have happened. I'm involved in this thing. Many people have died. Many people have changed locations. As I'm talking to you now, I know that this time when they were registered in 2011, many people in the redemption camp there was in Redeemers University in the Redemption Camp. Redeemers University have now moved to Ede in Osho State. So many students that registered in Redeemers University, their cars will be here in Redemption Camp, in the university. There are many of them that have since graduated, that, and many of them have traveled out of the country. They will be shouting, they are, the people have not received their PVC. They will be shouting, no, let, I told you earlier on, let them face the issue. Let them tell Nigerians what they have to offer. Let them re keep away from the failure of INEC from and leave people like us to shout on INEC. From your experience, how feasible is this accreditation process? INEC says between 8 and 1. Uh, and before then voting the way, starts till the last accredited voter. In, in fact, for your information, before it, accredit accreditation stops 12 o'clock. Mm. So they added one hour. Mm. So, what is the big deal? And this time now, they want to do it both electronically and manually. So, to me, there is no big deal about it. Just as I said, it is only just that's one of the things I got from my father. It is a lazy man that will always be crying with the implement of his work. Oh, the camera is not good. Oh, this microphone is not good. You are a lazy broadcaster. But once you get there, it is not done. Oh, yeah, let's do it this way. Let's turn the light. Let's use one light and so on. You are ready for work. Let me take this call. Just a minute. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Anyone there? I'm afraid we lost that. You have to call us back and able to turn down the volume so of the TV. So mine is mm. that let the PDP and, of course, by implication, the APC take advantage of this injury time and sell themselves to the people. Let them set up a team, interact with INEC. We are interacting with INEC. Our team are working with INEC that, look, we must improve on this thing. We want to get it right. Now let's work on logistics. How do we distribute all these materials within, ten, within time? Those are things that we should be looking at. Let us help INEC. This is not the time that government will be accusing PDP, uh, 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 INEC, that they are not working. It's too late in the day. These are distraction. By telling them all this wahala, they are just distracting them. How do we help you? Well, you recall that when INEC chairman was asked at, um, by the senators that what happened if the card reader fails? And then he, gives an option, or he gave an option that um, elections can continue into the next day. Yes. You consider all of the staggered elections? I just as What's I said, the implication I was of that? Or in, the integrity of the process? I was in Anambra. The election was, did not take place on the Saturday. It took, they now shifted it to the next day. They can even shift it to another day. All we want is to, you see, we are working on technology. The day technology started was not the day it ran perfect. We must also bear in mind how sacrosanct the matrix is. No matter how sacrosanct, let us mm. move forward. All this kick, kick up will not, look, May 29 is the bus stop. Nothing can change it except we want to have construction crisis on our hands. The, co the government came four years ago, and its terminal date is on the May 28th. Okay. No more, no less. Let me just add this. Anything we want to do, let us have the fear of God. Because all of us will be history very soon, but again, it is what we do while alive that will count after us. While then children and children's children. Some people said it won't be possible in Nigeria. We remember the Abacha days. Please, let us just give peace a chance in this country. Let us move towards getting it, no matter how. I was trying to, the GSM, when we all started using the GSM, Hello. it was maybe 15 naira per, per minute then. If you have a drop call, she can your money don't go. Hello. But now, it's per second. Let's take this call. Papa. Hello, good morning. Good morning, anyone there? What's your name? Where are you calling from? Yeah. What's your name, please? Where are you calling from? Are you there? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. What's your uh, name? You know, I, I I want you to know that uh, all these issues of um, you know trying to you know you know uh, give excuses uh, here and there. All I know is that Nigerians are praying. Nigerians are praying. Nigerians are seriously praying. Those that the uh, situation in the country are uh, yeah, that are concerned. I just be praying, and I know that uh, God's will will eventually prevail. I know God's will will eventually prevail, and uh, 
All I know is that uh, I'm all the agent, whatever, whatever they are trying to use as an excuse, whether to draw to drag us back as a nation, we we fail and God's world will prevail. Thank you, God bless you. Thank you very much for your contribution. Nigeria has an amazing faith in God. Mm. And we're also hoping that <laughs> we, we are can the do, of faith. We can do our part. <laughs> we are the and not burden God too much with <laughs> Go any street, you see church, you see mosques. Mm. Anything I live and for God. <laughs> Anything God did. Before, before I let Anything you go. There is God, <laughs> before I let you go on the show today. Uh, uh, what do you think of the idea that um, for instance INEC recorded, INEC claimed to have recorded 59% uh, in the objective of, what do they call it now, biometric validation. Mm. Now, if the PVC can be confirmed to mm. be the authentic one by the card reader, why should we still burden ourselves with the biometrics? For instance, what INEC is saying now is that if the if 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 the card or if the reader cannot read your fingerprint then you can do physical authentication so why not just stick with validating that the card is issued by Alex? since you can tell from the picture and the all that information on the card that the person bearing the card is actually the owner why waste more time with the biometrics well the whole thing is that they want to see how they can get perfection but just as I said earlier on, there's the issue of incident from which they have done as plan, as plan B. But then, I don't think that's absolute. Okay. There's still opportunity. And that's what I'm looking at. And I know that uh, people are working with them. Mm -hmm. The technical people, the ICT people are working on this, IC, on this uh, card reader thing to okay. ensure its perfection. Mm -hmm. And of course, they are working on getting more power source for the but for the smart card reader so that it doesn't fail and of course for the i for the what's it now the pass or the internet what was it service providers they are working with them too to ensure that they expand their base to some rural area they'll be using some small satellite mark, uh, dishes and so on to expand the coverage so a whole lot is being done between now and the election day but be that as it may that does not mean that they should rest on their own. I'm actually amazed that you are this optimistic, given the experience that Nigerians have had in the past with INEC. Even when we were not using card readers, the logistic challenges. Uh, the, 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 my only problem is logistics. But apart from that, I'm optimistic because all eyes, all eyes are on Jega and his team. And they cannot afford to fail because it's credibility. I like that way. I like the way the man has brought it. This man is in the eye of the storm. And God help him if he fails. Mm. Because the Yoruba will say, then go gen to two, then go chop and raw. <laughs> he dares not fail. He dares not fail. So all we want is that people should support this idea and ensure, because the other leg is that if the heaven will fall, it won't fall on Jaga alone. Mm. It will fall on all of us. Mm. So let us support this man. He has been given this responsibility. That's why people are like, I'm not giving any money for what I'm doing. Most of the time I go to Abuja at my own expense. Mm. Why? Because we want this project to succeed. And everyone should. And we should remove politics because this is a national issue. And this is being run by a national institution. And, my, and, and that's why I'm even worried that if anybody should support Jega and his team, and that's INEC, it should be PDP to give them all the support they need to succeed, not to start castigating them the way they've been doing in the last few days. It's quite embarrassing. Hello, good morning. Welcome to Call Digest. Are you there? Oh, that's terrible. Can you move away from where you are and let's um, get a better connection so we can hear you clearly? Don't forget, when you call in, turn down the volume of your TV set so we can I, have I, a crystal clear I'm talking clear about national institutions. See what has been happening now to the military. Mm. Oh, we are here castigating them because they were not given the will without to work. I see. Now, is it, or did they bring another military from China? Did they import soldiers from uh, no, Zambia? They brought some from Chad. <laughs> <laughs> those from, Chad, they are, they are not from they are, the J and Cameroon. Are, those ones are just giving them support. I see. But the Nigerian military are working because they've been given the way with that because of the support by government. That's what I'm talking. Let government give Jega all the support they need, not for them to be castigating him. Hello, good morning. Hello, I'm asking. What's your name? Where are you calling from? I'm calling from uh, Lagos. What's your name? Uh, Austin, I'm Austin. My name is Austin. Austin, can you turn down the volume of your TV set? Is it possible? 
Can you turn down the volume of your TV set, Austin? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm coming down. Okay, it's better now. Please go ahead with your contribution, Austin. Uh, what I want to contribute to you to do, you be making use of that leader now. Making use of that leader now is not, is not necessary because the presidential election is not a translocated election. This is, this is the first time to uh, that that is in Nigeria. It's not supposed to be in the presidential election that they use the first time to use the card. To use the card in Nigeria. If you, if, you, if you want to use it in a presidential election, if you want to use the card, you start to calculate the election. Okay, maybe there shall be God will be, will be more correct. <laughs> but no, then, just angry with my reaction. Whereas I didn't, I'm just saying that I think I can identify with someone like Austin uh, where the fear uh, is coming look, from. Look, for information, my mm. brother, the rule we, lo we look, look, I'm a lawyer and we like, we must do things according to law. If we begin to allow sentiments to rule, we won't go there. For your information, just as I was saying some few minutes ago, INEC is a national institution. The man Jaga is not working out of his own idea. He's following rules and regulation. And the electoral acts and the constitution that sets up INEC says that they have the power to set rules and regulations and mode and modalities for the conduct of their election. So the man is within his constitutional right. He has fixed an election date. He has fixed the mode and type of work he has to do. He has gone to the Senate. The Senate has given approval to do this work. So all these things are side attraction. That's why I say, let us support him. Instead of all this cry, he can't work, he can't work, he can't work. A that PDP governor anywhere. recently quoted INEC chairman uh, saying that the reason why they did not use the card readers for the AKT election was because it was a sensitive election. Now, if that is true, many are also wondering which one is more sensitive now, the gubernatorial election or a general election at this time? For your information, I'm involved in the AKT election. Less than 400 people got their PVC. And they said they are not going to use the PVC, uh, the, the card reader. Then again, it wasn't even in town. Mm -hmm. they, are not import, they are still importing. Like, I learned that they are still expecting some consignment of PVC. So they do not have the, P, the card reader itself. Then they now said no, because they have not even tested it the way they just did some few weeks ago. But all those things are issues, just as I said earlier on. It is within the purview of INEC to release rules and regulations. But really, INEC has issues, though. I'm not contesting that they don't have issue. Because they just tested these card readers. I'm not contesting they don't have issue. I've already stated it that they have issues. Mm. But what I'm saying is that we can't because they have issues now say we won't have an election. Mm. We won't say because of that we want to first, we want to bring constitutional crisis on our hands. We won't say because INEC have issues then we should leave the election and set up an interim government which is unconstitutional. We won't say because INEC have issues, then we'll go, everybody will go his own way. We have to make do with that peculiar we to, challenge. We have to make we and see how we can solve it. That's what I'm saying. And Let's take this last call. Like it. Mm. Sorry, I have no apology to it. The rule is that we must have an election. There, there is a day that has been set up. We have some few days. Let us see how we can work out how this thing can be done. Just a this minute. thing is mm. akin to a woman who has gone to the market. She bought all the ingredients. She wanted to cook the soup. One way or the other, water passed uh, pass oil for the soup. She must make an amendment or else there must not... 
the children will not eat, or the husband will not eat if he comes Hello, back good, from work. good morning. <laughs> Hello, good morning. What's your name? Where are you calling from? I'm uh, Tamilore from Kano. Tamilore from Kano. What a name for Kano. How are you today, Tamilore? You have one minute. You are the last caller on the show today. Please go ahead with your contribution. I uh, really, my own contribution is really the cause of the very tremendous achievement and the need for the election. Mm. Because even here, during the PDC collection, I noticed some of the minorities in which one person will be intend to exist in this. Mm. So if really the Kadrida can go a long way to win, being given the vote, at least can help us to cut you said you saw someone who has six PVC, PVC or TVC, which one? PVC, the powerful voter's card. Permanent voter cards, just one person had six? Yes. Oh, I see. And it's awesome. So I think we, with the data online, at least with the Kaduda content, it's really the program makes sense. It's all right. So that's just my contribution. Thank and you very much for... Them. Y your contribution uh, in such a case where someone has more than one PVC you know at the time also we also heard that some people stole some PVC some bought it over what can the card reader do to so, check all of these uh, you can only irregularities once. Once you put, I said it earlier on once you put your finger on the smart card reader that's all it send it to the central server mm -hmm. and once you vote there you can't vote again. You can't use it somewhere else because it's already there. There is nobody who has two fingerprints. It's only one fingerprint. Mm -hmm. So all these ones is wahala and yeah, yeah, is useless. And that's why those who are crying that they want PV, they don't want the card reader. That's why they are crying so that they will go around with their with their various cards and be voting all over. Uh, this one that will, will eliminate it. That's why they are crying. And that's why I said anybody who supports the uh, you're, uh, no, not using the card reader is a fraudulent person. It's all right. I have no apology to that because nobody will see something good and you say you don't like it. Thank you very much for joining us today. I've been speaking with Wale Oguade. He's a legal practitioner, human rights activist, and is also president voter awareness initiative. I wrote that down so that um, <laughs> to go be the glory. I wouldn't mess up with it. <laughs> and a big thank you to MCL for giving us the right pictures to everything we said on the show today. I am Nifemi Ogunto. I'll be back tomorrow, God willing, with another exciting edition of Call Digest. Stick around and go away. You can now watch Call TV News Live from anywhere in the world on our website, www.calltvnews.com. Click on Live TV on our website and watch us live. And welcome to Cool TV Primetime News. To follow us on Twitter, click on Twitter icon on our website. And Facebook, click on the Facebook and YouTube to see all our previous news production. You can also watch us live on YouTube. Click Cool TV, leave a space, then news. Cool TV News, a 24-hour news station.